Hello guys, welcome back. On today's video, we are going to swap the Italistic M3 brakes, calipers, and rotors at the same time. And on top of that, we are also going to do a brake flush. Yes, that's a lot of work to do today. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing I would like to point out is that if you are coming to my channel for the first time, thank you for stopping by and make sure that you subscribe and like this video because there's a lot of great content like this one on the channel. Feel free to browse and you will see exactly what I'm doing with this car and the F80 M3 behind me right there. A couple of months ago, I stumbled upon these brakes on sale, you know, online, right, at a forum. So these are the same factory M3 brakes. It's just that I've painted them blue and these are the power stop rotors and the power stop pad. Now this is kind of what I want to set as my daily and every day, but the day I go to the track, I only want to change the pad with, you know, some racing pad. Right now, um, a few weeks ago, I went ahead and, you know, painted these blue just so that I can match the blue M3 color, the same type of blue that I have on the F80 M3. Now these rotors right here are very, 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 very new. I know they look like they're old and whatever, but these have less than a thousand miles on them, both set. Same for the brakes. Now the calipers themselves come from an M3 that had a very, very, very low mileage, around 60,000. So I didn't go ahead and kind of like rebuild it because I felt like everything was still fairly good. Before it was painted, it was actually looking way better than my actual brakes that I have that you can see right there. So on today's video, we are pretty much going to swap these, swap the pads and swap the rotors. That's exactly what we're going to do. And this is for each you know, side, both fronts and both back. So let me go ahead and explain the process to replace this. So to replace this, we don't have to remove this whole caliper assembly, remove these rotors. Now, to start the process, we remove this one right here. There are a few bolts on the back here that we are also going to loosen. And then after that, we can remove this caliper. After we do that, we have to remove this brake line right there, install a new caliper, put back the brake and remove, uh, remove the rotors before that, then install everything back up. I'm only going to show you on one side because the same process goes for the front and the back, exact same process. So I'm only going to show you maybe on this one and then you just repeat this for the rest of the car and that will do the job. So let's go ahead and get started. To remove this brake pad and rotor assembly, normally the right way to do it is to remove this little piece right here with a screwdriver you pop it out this way then using a hex six millimeter remove this little top section here put the six millimeter hex here unscrew this part that is going to release the caliper then you have another one on the bottom here well, bottom here that you have to do the exact same thing now because i want to remove the whole assembly i want i'm just going to go ahead and remove the 16 that you see here this 16 and then the one on the bottom here once i remove that i should be able to remove this whole caliper assembly as one piece then i'm going to just unscrew the brake line put the new caliper and put the brake line right away because i just don't want to lose too many um fluids so that it's kind of dirty the area right here so i have this little old rug right here just to kind of catch the excess that is going to drip whenever i am doing that process normally this bolt right here is a 14 millimeter but it seems like the previous you know owner of this car changed this brake cable and then this bolt is a little different i have to figure out because it's not a 14 here now on the normal car this should be a 14. so what i'm going to do now is just remove this and the one on the bottom and then remove this whole assembly What I've done here is I've loosened the 16 millimeter bolts. Now I want to go ahead and loosen the brake line so that when I remove the whole caliper assembly, I'm going to let it rest on this little bucket here and then remove completely the line, remove this and mount everything again in a reverse order. Let me go ahead now using this 916 to remove, actually not remove, to 
loosen the brake line now on your car it should be a 14 millimeter brake line is loose now now what i'm going to do is finish removing the 16 bolts and then try to remove the whole assembly as one piece then remove the brake line All right, as you can see, the whole assembly can come out in one piece. Now I will go ahead and remove the rotor using a six millimeter hex. It's also a good idea to put a screwdriver here just to avoid the, you know, the rotors from spinning. As you can see right here, it spins. So this is going to just help you kind of like get them together so you can break this loose. All right. Okay. Put that to the side. Clean up this area a little bit, then mount the new one. I am finally done swapping the brakes. This is the finished product. I still have to do the brake bleed. So if we come here on the back, you can see new rotors, new brake calipers, brake pad and everything. If we go on the other side, you will see right here, same thing. And on the front, have it right there. Now I'll go ahead now and do the brake flush and I'm gonna link a video on top where I've done the brake flush on a previous car. Now for this specific vehicle, this is the reservoir right there. So when you start, you wanna make sure that you start on the passenger rear, then you do the driver side rear, then you do the passenger side front, then finally you do the driver side so you always go diagonal so rear passenger rear driver front passenger front driver so now again check the link on the video above for the instruction on how to complete the brake flush let me go ahead and do that really quick mount everything take it on the test drive the brake flush is completed i also test the car around the neighborhood just to make sure that everything is good so far so good i've tested the braking power is good same as what i had before it's just that i wanted to refresh everything this is not a big brembo kit or anything like that that i installed it's just the same m3 you know stopping power so i shouldn't see any improvement i just wanted to have newer pads newer rotors newer um, better rotors and things like that now in terms of the brake flush this is the fluid that i use here i use a moto 600 so this is a brake fluid mainly for autocross and you know racing so the reason i decided to use this is because this car is kind of like daily autocross track day so i want to make sure that i have a track fluid on the car always because when i take it to the track i don't want to flush and put you know it's just too much time consuming i rather just use a you know track fluid on a daily basis and that's what i'm decided to use right there now this one <laughs> oh lord this one is the old fluid this is what i can this is just half of it the other half is inside this bottle you know this is one bottle and i have half of it around on this one but dirty as hell as you can see disgusting this is what was my system so when i see a fluid dark like that it means that probably the last time that a brake flow was done on this car was maybe over a hundred thousand miles ago so it's very 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 nice that i've completed this now now things that i have left to do now in order for the car to be quote unquote ready for the track i have to do valve cover gasket i have to change the spark plug and ignition coil once i do that i will be somewhat ready for day one on the track now i still have a lot of few things to do you know in here such as the vanos i'm not sure if my van is not bad but i just want to kind of like change it so I also have to do the cooling system. Now, because the cooling system is a little extensive job, I'm trying to save up money right now so that I can do everything at once. I don't want to change one item and come back another time, do the other one because you have to flush the coolant. So I want to do 
everything all at once including the oil filter gasket because they kind of all work together in the same area of the front of the car so i'd rather just do all of them at once so that's why i haven't completed that because those items are a, are a bit expensive so i'm saving up for that now things that i have coming up as i mentioned probably going to be uh, suspension as you can see these are the front the backs i'm only going to do the bc right there these are max pending rod again the reason i'm i'm going to explain this when i'm doing a suspension video so stay tuned for that video i'm not going to explain to you why i'm running these for i'm going to be running these for now this one was a fairly simple video it could, took me a few hours to complete this job again even though that i was filming now these are the type of stuff that you know you can do yourself in your house one thing i also wanted to point out is that whenever you're doing the brake flush especially if you've changed your rotors or you know calipers and things like that whenever you move the piston before you drive the car make sure that you pump the brake pedal a few times until it gets firm this is because you have to reposition the pistons on each caliper to the original position before you can drive the car away right that's very 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 important to do that step okay guys this is the end of the video thank you for watching make sure that you subscribe give it a thumbs up if you like this content and also watch other videos on my channel because i have a lot lot more content regarding these cars right here and also do stay tuned to see how i take the car for my first ever track day this is going to be my you know kind of track build i'm taking it slowly and over the years i'm going to turn it into a full 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 race track car but for now i'm kind of do like a daily track autocross type of car you know this one is more like pleasure and also i want to take this car also to the track someday but that one is not track ready quote unquote for me because if i want to take it to the track i need track part same here the day that i take it to the truck i'm gonna have to swap the truck uh put truck part here because these are just street part now i have to purchase that those are little items that you know when you want to take the car to the truck you have to do and i'm going to probably make a video kind of explaining items that are very very critical whenever you want to take your car to the truck i know that a lot of you watching already know this but there are other people that are new to the channel new to this you know racing world that really want to find out all this information that's what i prefer to you know disclose it to everyone all right on this note now i will let you guys go and see you on the next video bye bye